Welcome to the second video of this part one of my new Raspberry series. I apologize for the delay. Okay, let's get this thing all put together. I have laid out here all the parts we're going to need. With one exception, I have these little protectors for the cable sockets that we don't use here. So I'm going to take them aside. I just want to show that I pulled off one from here and two from here. Pull up the exact ones from these sockets that we will be putting cables into. But let me go through it. In terms of the, uh, the SATA 2.5 inch drive controller board, we're going to be using only the four standoffs here, the smaller ones, not the longer ones that came with this. We're going to be using four of the small screws and we're going to be using all six of the larger screws. We're also going to be using the USB 3.0 jumper and I've also taken away the cable, the power cable from this. And there was one more standoff that had a screwed end that was also removed. We don't need that either because that was used to support that cable. In terms of the power card, we're going to be using these four standoffs that have the threaded end. The, the other four standoffs that had the non-threaded end we're not using. And we're using four of the smaller screws, not all eight. And we are not going to be using either one of the two jumpers that came in this kit either. And of course we are using the power because this is the one that will be connected to power from between these two boards. In terms of the case, these are the parts that came with the case. And here we are using all four of the short screws, but none of the longer screws. We're using all four of the long standoffs. We're not using the fan that came with this because this guy is the fan that keeps the CPU and the memory cool. You only use one fan, so this, you're not gonna, we're not going to connect that to the case. And then these four screws are actually used to, to lock the case in place. And then of course we have the Raspberry Pi Pro over here and the 2.5 inch storage drive, in this case a one terabyte Western Digital Black hard drive, which could be an SSD if we wanted it. I just had this available, so that's what we're using for this. And my two tools are going to be a small, I think this is a number two Phillips screwdriver that's magnetized. And I got a 3 16th inch nut driver that'll make locking down some of these standoffs a little bit easier. It's the same nut driver that I use for the case to hold in the case motherboard supports when I have to move them around. Or in some cases, add them in. So let me go ahead and pull this out of the way for now. We don't need this right now. This comes in the last steps, including these four screws. However, these four standoffs are going to be done in the first couple of steps. So we're going to push those over here. Now I'm going to do this in a, in a very precise order, and it's important because if you don't follow the order in putting this stuff together, you're going to wind up having to redo work. So this board is going to have a SATA hard drive underneath it, or SATA drive. So it's going to need standoffs for that drive to keep it off of the bottom of the case. Now these are, that's the longer ones. The shorter ones are used to mount on top of, or out right underneath the power board. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on first so that, so that we get them out of the way. Otherwise we wind up with a little bit of a challenge in terms of getting to some of the screws. Actually it's the reverse of that. Let me do these standoffs first because otherwise it'll be difficult doing the other ones. Well, in terms of the standoffs, it doesn't really matter, but I gotta make sure before I lock the hard drive in, I have all the standoffs on. So let's just put it that way. So the long standoffs go into these holes, the ones without the screw written on it. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. And the short standoffs point the others on the other side, go into the ones that have the screw on them. So we could do it in either order. It doesn't really matter. They, they do use different screws, however. So when we put the longer one on, which I'll put those on first, we'll have to use these larger screws. So I'll put one through and then I'll thread the standoff like so. And then I will tighten it up by putting the nut driver and screwdriver together and just give it a little bit of a tightness. So I'm going to jump ahead as I put all four of those on. Now I'll put the other four going in the other direction. So they're ones that are going to support this power board. Okay, so now all the standoffs are on in the right place. So you got to do all that first. Then we can put the hard drive in. Now keep in mind with the hard drive, or at least take note of it, there's little spacers in here, actually embedded onto the board itself. The screw is gonna go through that spacer first, and it barely makes it into the hard drive. So I suggest we get them started first through here, 
until they just start to touch your finger. I feel it there. I'll do the same thing for the other one. And they got to line up very, very carefully with the drive. My finger there again until I feel it there. Now we'll put the hard drive in, in this case the hard, a two and a half inch storage drive. How's that? So it goes right into place here and goes right into the connector. Now you got to be very careful to make sure it's lined up so we can get these screws into the drive. A little bit off and you can't get these screws threaded to. There's not a lot of thread available to them. So you're going to have to sort of wiggle it around until you feel it sort of fall in to the spot. And then you tighten it and make sure that it's not separating from the, from the board. Right now it is. Let me try the other one. Maybe that's a little bit easier. Okay, that one caught right away. So that one went through and connected into the hard drive. This one is still being stubborn. Oh, now it, now it lined up. So I guess that one lined it up. So now the hard drive is in place and locked in place. Remember, it's going to go in this way into the case. So what's next? I'm going to save this for last. We got to put the power board on. Now we've already got the four studs on top and these four screws are meant to hold it down to that. Whoops, take that back. We got to put the raspberry in next and it goes on top of these four studs. So we got to make sure that the USB 3.0s are aligned on the same side. We'll put those in place. And then we got to take these four threaded studs that came with the power control. They're what's going to lock the raspberry down. We're going to take these and thread them in here. So they become your screws that hold down the raspberry Pi. You want to keep things semi tight so you get the proper grounding between the various pieces. That's very important. Now let's put this uh, next board in here. This goes on top, but it goes in this direction. It's going to line up exactly. It has a connector in the bottom that connects up to the 40 pin IO. So you got to sort of slide that down. Be very careful to line it up exactly right. And you got to slide that down on top of the connect. There we go. Try not to have the pins cocked and just bring it all the way down. It should go down smoothly. And then we use these four screws that came with the power controller to lock that down. Then finally, for this self-contained unit, we got to put the power connector. Now it has to connect to this one on the power controller. However, it could connect to either one of these on the SATA card. So I will go ahead and I chose this one here. Put that one end and it's got little latches that won't, can't be put in the wrong way. So that's very important to understand with that. Put that in like this. The reason I chose the more distant one is that way we can keep it out of our way a little bit more. Okay, when it's in the case, it stretches it out just enough. Okay, so now time for the case. The case, I've already taken the screws off as you saw before. So it comes out. Now we're not going to put the fan in here, as I said before. So that fan is not going into this spot. We're going to leave that blank. Obviously this has the connectors that will go on this side. So this is the way it has to go in. So what we do is we take the entire device and we put it inside the case. The combined sandwich of a Raspberry and miscellaneous controller. We turn it upside down and then there's four screw holes here right into those bottom long studs. So we will then put those in and secure it in place. Now it's all together. We gotta put the power switch on. So that's the last component that we have to actually, it has a nut on it, you gotta undo it. It has a little rubber protector here. Take this off, little rubber band. All we do is that rubber band goes on the other side of the nut. Not sure why they didn't, why they didn't put it in there to start with, but it helps protect and buffer the switch from the outside of the case. So we take the whole thing off because we got to get the whole thing off anyway to get the thing in there. There's four wires. Put this on here, all the way in. So that becomes a nice little like a rubber buffer. We put the whole switch through here, put it in place. Now we put the nut back on. You're going to need a pair of like long nose pliers to tighten this thing down. Not too tight, but you know, you want to get it somewhat snug. Put it into place here. Many years ago when I used to make Heath kits, I used to do a lot of these types of things because there's a lot of case mounted hardware like this. You've got to get it centered just right. There we go. And then once you spin it, it should spin freely until you get it all the way in there. Try to finger tighten it as much as possible. And then once you've done that very carefully, take a pair of long nose pliers and try to just give it a little bit of a tightening around the edges like that. And then this goes into the other connector that I've left open here. Again, there's a little guide so you can't get it wrong. It actually goes the other way on it. 
Well, look what happened here. This one fell off on me. I didn't want that one off, so I'll put that one back. Like I said, these things are not in there very tight, so chances are they will fall off. We'll put this in here, and it locks in place, and then we can put the cover onto the unit. And we got four screws here that we got to put in. These are the ones that are already in there. I had to take them out originally, if you recall. So we get these four screws in. And the last thing I do is take this little jumper, make sure it's oriented like this, so you can read the lettering, and you plug it in between the two boards. So the bottom two, USB 3.0. That's the ugliest part of the whole thing. It would've been nice. Maybe they could've just put some glue in there and then dried it before they printed it. These are the two USBs if you put a keyboard and hard drive. These are the 2.0s. You got the network card. And then of course we got the two monitor connectors, the mini mic monitor and the other power. I'm not gonna use this power either because I could not find them in the amperage that I wanted, but the one that goes in here that was available does come in that wattage. So that's what we're gonna plug the power into. So let me show you that. So here is again, this is from Geekworm. It's a four amp power supply and it will plug in over here on this one here. Don't plug it into here or else the power controller will not work right. So be sure you pay attention to that. Okay, let me hook up the stuff to it and make sure that it works. Okay, I've got it all hooked up now. Power supply, I got a monitor right over here. I've got the uh, network, I've got the mouse, the keyboard. Let me see if I power this thing up, what happens here? Turns blue just like I thought it would. Let me see if I see any activity on the monitor. I see lights on the inside too where the fan is at. And I feel the fan blowing. The fan is sucking air down and it's up. Let me switch over and capture the screen here and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so Raspberry's up. It's running on the hard drive. Just to double check that, I'll go into command prompt and I'll type in disk free DF. Yep, it's running off the hard drive. We have a terabyte, only 2% of it being used from the little two and a half inch hard drive there. Let me take a look at the um, accessories and I'm gonna look at task manager. I wanna see what's running here. And over here I can see what the CPU usage is, 6%, sort of bump up from down to one. We've only got 128 megabytes out of the four gig being used. And we got the standard set of processes that come up when we're running a Raspberry Pi. So that's it, we're up and running, we're looking good. Okay, so let me, um, Move on to the next step. Okay, well that concludes this video on taking a Raspberry Pi 4, putting a hard drive on it, and putting it into what is like a little console case, it's like a little self-contained PC, right? I do apologize again for having to split this video into two parts, but if I had not, it would have been too long. I wouldn't have even wanted to watch something that long. Hopefully I got the second one up quick enough here that uh, it didn't make that much of a difference, but um, I still do apologize for that. Well, in part two of this mini-series, we're gonna take this same device and I'm gonna replace the operating system. We're gonna take out the Raspbian software that's in there, which is a variant of Linux as well. But we're gonna put another one in that's specially created and has the appropriate drivers and other application software to turn it into a digital video recorder. Not sure exactly how much I'm gonna be able to test that as a digital video recorder, but I'll see what I can do. So hopefully you got something out of this video, you found it useful in some way. If you did, at least consider subscribing to my channel, please. That would really be helpful. Well, until the next time, take care and be safe and be well. Mm -hmm.